Hello, I'm Carolyn. I'm one of the instructors at NTRC. And today we're going to go over tacking basics with our friend Patch here. So Patch has just been groomed. He was in class already once today, but we also went over and made sure that all of his areas were clean. We went and checked his chest, his armpits and his girth, made sure there was nothing there. I checked his feet and his fetlocks to make sure there was nothing there that would bother him. So he's all ready to go. The first step to getting my horse tacked is I'm gonna get a saddle pad. That's the blanket that goes underneath the saddle against his skin and gives him that little extra cushion between your bum and the saddle and his back. There's Patch's saddle pad. I'm gonna make sure any straps that are on it are on the outside. You wouldn't want those irritating his skin. And if it's got these ones at the front, these ones, if it's got these ones, they go at the front. Loops at the bottom, loops at the front, up and over. The pad should sit all the way up on the withers. It, even if it's a little bit farther forward than you think it should be, that's better than too far back because once you get the saddle on, everything will settle into place. So if it's too far back, it's gonna go back here and your saddle will be up here. But if you put it a little bit too far forward, then once you put the saddle on, everything's just going to slide to where it needs to be. So right up on his withers like that. Uh, next we're going to get the saddle. There's Patch's saddle. He uses a dressage saddle so the girth is already attached. Otherwise the girth might be something you have to attach on both sides instead of just on one like I'm going to show you today. So I'll put the girth up over there so it's out of our way. Saddle goes up and onto his back. Same as with the pad, you want to err a little bit on the side of too far forward versus too far back for the same reason. Once he starts moving, the saddle will slide into place back, but it will not slide forward. That's against the run of his hair. So a little bit farther forward, it'll slide to where it needs to go. The other thing to do once you make sure the saddle's on there, Check your flaps, make sure that they're lying flat, not folded like this, everything nice and flat. Those straps that were on the pad, pull those out. Again, we don't need anything irritating him between the saddle and the pad in his back. The last thing to do is we're gonna peek up the saddle pad a little bit, just like this. Just like that. What that'll do is when the rider mounts, it means that they've got a little bit of play here. When they mount and it goes down, it's not going to start slicing into his withers. He's got lots of room up here, lots of space for it to move as necessary. And otherwise it would just be pushing into his withers the second any, any kind of position change happened with the saddle. I can check it from the back, make sure it's lined up. That's pretty good. And we're ready to do up the girth. So like I said, his is already attached on the other side. I can drop it down. Otherwise, you do the exact same thing that I'm gonna do on this side, on the other side. So the girth's hanging down there. I'm gonna bend down, pick it up. Some of them have two billets, some of them have three. If you have three billets, we generally use the outside two rather than the one in the middle. Uh, that is because if these saddles were actually like built for each individual horse, you could customize more a little bit whether you wanted the girth just a hair farther forward or a hair back. But since these saddles are kind of general for our horses, we put them all at the, the midpoint, which is the first and third billets. He's only got two, so no worries. Make sure when you put the billet through the buckle, it always touches the roller. If you look on there, there's a roller. If you put it down under the second one, it is much, 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 much harder to tighten and to loosen, and it is much harder to get off. So always make sure that the billet is touching the roller. And snug that up just a little bit. It doesn't need to be too tight yet because we're not riding patch yet. We're gonna put the saddle on secure enough, it's not gonna fall off of him, but loose enough that he's not gonna be uncomfortable waiting for his rider.
there we go. If your billets are really long, you can tuck them in, but these ones aren't too long. We're just gonna let them hang. That's not a problem. Next up, and this is very important, I'm gonna put down my saddle rack. So I move my things off of my rack, my pad, and my saddle, my girth. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but that way, no one's gonna run into it. If those saddle racks are all sticking out all over the barn, there's a good chance that at some point, someone's gonna walk into one, it's gonna dig them in the side, or a horse is gonna get one in the chest. No one wants that. Uh, so make sure as soon as your things are off the rack, put the rack flat against the wall again. So right now, Patch is still wearing his pasture halter, this pink one. We need to get his class halter on. Let me show you how we do that. First, I'm gonna grab the halter. It's these nice black ones. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbuckle this one, but keep it around his neck. Just like that. That way his face is clear, but he's not going anywhere. He's still tied up. Now I can put his class halter on. The reason we use different halters, these black ones are kind of like their service halters. Like if you think of service dogs, how they have that vest that they wear when they're working, these are their working halters. So anytime this black one's on his face, he knows it's time for business. We're gonna tuck the tail in there, make sure the halter is sitting just under his cheekbones here. If you can feel there's bones there. I don't want the buckle rubbing on them. So that's very, very about right. Now I can move the buckles from his other halter to this one. And we can take his pasture halter off. Once he's got his class halter on, we can get his bridle. Patch wears a bitless bridle, but I'm gonna kind of do the motions of how we would put a bit in his mouth uh, because this is an instructional video, so you should know. The position that I'm gonna take is gonna be exactly the same. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stand beside him facing forward, reach up over his head. My hand is all the way up over his head here. That's the hand that's gonna hold the head stall. If I had a bit, I would have that bit in my hand nice and flat. Sorry, Patch. Nice and flat so that he's got nothing he can pinch on if he accidentally gets some of my hand when he takes the bit. So my hand up and over there, bit goes into his mouth, and the head stall pulls up. Then I can get his little ears into the head stall. And don't be afraid, they bend a little bit. They're just soft. <laughs> I can adjust it, make sure everything's sitting where it needs to. I'm gonna check and make sure that his nose band is not bothering his halter at all, make sure that his brow band is sitting over his eyes, not down crunching on his eyelids. And if he had more forelock, I'd make sure that that was pulled out as well because we don't, you know, when you wear a hat and it mushes your hair the wrong way, it gets uncomfortable. We're gonna make sure that that's all pulled out too. If he had a bit, I would do a double check, make sure it's on top of his tongue, not underneath. If it's underneath, it's very uncomfortable, you're gonna have a bad time. It has to be over top of his tongue. Uh, that, that's where it needs to go. Otherwise, like I said, it gets uncomfortable, you can imagine, and your horse is not gonna be having a good day at all. All right, the only things left to get onto Patch now are his reins and stirrups. Let's start with the stirrups. These are the stirrups we're gonna use for Patch today. When you're putting them on, we use peacock stirrups here. These are a kind of safety stirrup with a rubber band on them. The way you know which side is the right side, the rubber band always faces forward and the buckle faces out. These ones are a little bit newer and the Webers don't have a hole in this side, but if you look at the other side, this is where the buckle goes in, which means this is where the buckle goes out. So rubber band forward, buckle out. This one goes on this side. You can make it hard and get them this way, 
but it's much easier to get them here. Lift up this little flap and there's your hook for your stirrup right there. Stirrup just slides on. And you are all set for class there. It can be tricky. Some of these hooks are very tight to the saddle. If you need help, you can ask or, uh, no, just ask. <laughs> if you need help, ask. And then of course we'd be sure the other one, buckle forward or elastic forward, buckle out. That one's going to go on that side. The last thing we need for Patch is his reins. So like I said, Patch is wearing a bitless bridle. He doesn't have a bit to attach to. So for Patch, we're going to attach our reins right down here on the end of those. Any other horse, any horse that has a bit, we're going to start on the breakaways here. This makes it just a little bit gentler on the horse's mouth, especially for riders uh, that are have less control or a little bit less experience riding independently. If the instructor decides they can go on the halter or they can go on the horse's bit. But as a default, reins go on the breakaways. And like I said, that just makes it a little bit easier and gentler for our horse. For Patch, like I said, they go all the way down there. Up and over his neck. And down there. And Patch is ready for class. So uh, we made sure that we had, he was all groomed. We put on the saddle pad. We put the saddle on over top. We peeked up the pad underneath so it's not going to be a bother his shoulders. We did up the girth under the roller. The stirrups go on here, the elastic forward and the buckle facing out. The black class halter goes on and then the bridle. The reins go on either down here or on the breakaways. I can put my lead rope under his chin and we're ready to go. All I have to do is cross, uncross time and lead him on out. Thank you for joining us learning how to tack your horse up today.